In a world full of social media posts showing people posing with, petting, holding, or riding animals, people are getting closer and closer to wildlife, literally. And when we're not watching animals in nature, we're watching videos of baby animals on the internet. So why stop now? But if you see one of these unique animals face to face, just turn around and move the other way. They're dangerous and don't touch. No matter how fluffy the puffy fish looks, no matter how sexy the snail shell is, no matter how lovely the lizard might be, here are 15 dangerous animals you should never touch. Venom is, is very complex, but the main constituent part is what's called a neurotoxin. <laughs> Number 15. Pufferfish. When you mess with puffers, this might happen. Perhaps this baby shark took a bite out of the wrong fish, and no matter how cute the pufferfish is, a predator that manages to snag a puffer before it inflates won't feel lucky for long. Almost all pufferfish contain tetrodotoxin, a substance that makes them foul tasting and often lethal. To humans, tetrodotoxin is deadly, up to 1,200 times more poisonous than cyanide. There's enough toxin in one pufferfish to kill 30 adult humans, and there's no known antidote. In lieu of escape, pufferfish use their highly elastic stomachs and the ability to quickly ingest huge amounts of water, and even air when necessary, to turn themselves into a virtually inedible ball several times their normal size. Some species have also have spines on their skin to make them even less palatable. Amazingly, the meat of some pufferfish is considered a delicacy. Called fugu in Japan, it's extremely expensive and only prepared by trained, licensed chefs who know that one bad cut means almost certain death for a customer. In fact, many such deaths occur annually. Recently, these fish have been making a splash in Nintendo's popular Animal Crossing game which allows players to cast a fishing line and catch a pufferfish in the ocean. Is there a pufferfish emoji? <laughs> there should be. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14, Death Stalker Scorpion. One of the world's deadliest scorpions has an impressive and poisonous strike and scientists recently recorded the aggressive maneuver for the first time. Known as the Deathstalker scorpion, it was one of seven scorpion species filmed by a new study on the speed of a scorpion sting. According to researchers' findings, the Deathstalker snapped at 51 inches per second, nearly 3 miles per hour. In the new study, each scorpion was placed on a small platform surrounded by mirrors. A thin piece of wire was used to prompt the scorpion's sting, which was filmed from above at a rate of 500 frames per second. The video footage was then used to create 3D models of the sting, allowing the researchers to see how varied the strike patterns are. While the results showed that the speed and shape of a defensive snail strike may depend on the scorpion's species, body size, and tail shape, the reason for such variation among scorpions is still unknown. Scientists are making breakthroughs in studies researching the use of scorpion venom to treat certain medical conditions. Death stalker scorpion's venom may be used to help counteract the spread of brain cancer and may have use in controlling insulin levels in diabetics. Maybe it should change its name from death stalker to life giver scorpion. Number 13. Inland Taipan. Often cited as the world's most venomous snake, the inland taipan possesses highly neurotoxic venom with some other toxic elements that have multiple effects on victims. So steer clear. The venom is known to paralyze the victim's nervous system and clot the blood, which then blocks blood vessels and uses up clotting factors. In 1950 Australia, an amateur herpetologist was one of the first people to capture a taipan alive, although he was bitten in the process and died the next day. The snake, which ended up dying a few weeks later, was milked by a Melbourne zoologist and its venom used to develop an anti-venom, which became available in 1955. In his book Venom, which explores the development of a Taipan anti-venom in Australia in the 1940s and 1950s, author Brendan James Murray argues that only one person is known to have survived an inland Taipan without any venom, George Rosendale in 1949. Murray writes that Rosendale's condition was so severe that nurses later showed him extracted samples of his own blood that were completely black in color. 
But just so you know, the inland Taipan is generally shy, while the coastal Taipan can be quite aggressive when cornered and while actively defending itself. Absolutely phenomenal hunter. Very rare, very difficult to find. Number 12. Funnel Web Spider Funnel web spiders are spiders that build funnel-shaped webs. They get their name because, generally, their webs have a flat surface for capturing prey and a small funnel-like tube leading to a silken burrow in which the spider hides. The spider waits in the funnel for prey to fall onto the horizontal web, and then it rushes out, grabs the prey, and takes it back to the funnel. Bites from all funnel web spiders are considered potentially dangerous, but the two most notorious are the Sydney funnel web spider and the northern tree-dwelling funnel spider. The male's venom is five times as toxic as the female's because it contains a special chemical called robust toxin. Furthermore, males wander, searching for mates and running a higher risk of encountering humans, while females stay in their burrows. With their diet consisting of a number of small invertebrates, primarily millipedes, it begs the question, why have these arachnids developed a toxin strong enough to kill a perfectly healthy human within the hour? It's an evolutionary accident. The venom is highly effective on two groups, invertebrates and primates. It's just absolute bad luck in genetics. Funnel webs didn't evolve to attack humans. And if you were unfortunate enough to get bitten from a funnel web, you are very likely to be envenomated. Number 11. Microscopic Irukanji. The strings of these tropical swimmers can cause fatal brain damage and send between 50 to 100 people in the hospitals each year. Unlike most jellyfish, which have stingers only on their tentacles, the Irukanji also have stingers on its bell. Biologists have yet to discover the purpose of this unique characteristic. The hypothesis is that the feature enables the jellyfish to be more likely to catch its prey of small fish. Plus, Irukanji jellyfish have the ability to fire stingers from the tips of their tentacles and inject venom, a sting 100 times as potent as that of a cobra and 1,000 times stronger than a tarantula's. Irukanji syndrome develops with a small amount of venom and induces excruciating muscle cramps in their arms and legs, severe pain in the back and kidneys, a burning sensation of the skin and face, headaches, nausea, restlessness, sweating, vomiting, an increase in heart rate and blood pressure, and psychological phenomena such as the feeling of impending doom. But when properly treated, a single sting is normally not fatal. But two people in Australia are believed to have died from Irukanji stings in 2002 during a rash of incidents on Australia's northern coast attributed to these jellyfish greatly increasing public awareness of the Irukanji jellyfish. Number 10. Geographic Cone Snail this little guy is a cone snail. It has a host of deadly adaptations, including a venomous harpoon that it uses to catch prey. Their venom, a complex concoction of hundreds of different toxins, is delivered via a harpoon-like tooth propelled from an extendable proboscis. There's no anti-venom for a cone snail sting, and treatment is limited to merely keeping victims alive until the toxins wear off. The cone snail's highly specialized teeth, known as radulae, work like a combination of hypodermic needle and harpoon to skewer and poison its prey. The incredibly toxic venom of the geographic cone snail has to be strong enough to paralyze instantly. Ironically, among the compounds found in cone snail venom are proteins which, when isolated, have enormous potential as pain-killing drugs. Research shows that certain of these proteins target specific human pain receptors and can be up to 10,000 times more potent than morphine without morphine's addictive properties and side effects. Cone snails are found in tropical oceans and seas around the world, though some live in more temperate habitats, like the waters around Southern California, the Mediterranean Sea, and around the Southern Cape of South Africa. Number 9. Portuguese Man o' War the Portuguese man-o-war belongs to a bizarre group of animals that consist of colonies made up of dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of genetically identical individual creatures. These colonies spend a lot of time floating at the water surface, and when the gas bladder is expanded, it looks and acts like a sailboat. The tentacles extend 165 feet in length below the surface, and they're covered in venom-filled nematocysts used to paralyze and kill fish and other small creatures. The odds of being killed by a Portuguese man of war, however, are slim. But just because deaths are rare doesn't mean you should touch one. Stings can lead to red welts on the skin, muscle cramps, elevated heart rates, and vomiting. 
one unlucky victim suffered a full cardiovascular collapse and died after getting too close to a man of war in eastern Florida back in 1987. More recently, a woman swimming off Sardinia was stung by one and died of anaphylactic shock. But beware, even dead man of wars washed up on shore can deliver a sting. And just how did they get this unusual name? In the age of sailing, many European navies used tall warships loaded with cannons and propelled by three masts. British sailors took to calling this kind of vessel a man of war. Number 8. World's Most Painful Ant Bite Meet the Bullet Ant Native to the western rainforest of South America, the largest ant in the world, reaching over an inch in length, it also packs a sting 30 times more painful than a bee's. With a bullet ant sting, the pain is throughout your whole body. You start shaking, you start sweating, it goes through your entire body and your heart rate goes up. And if you have quite a few of them, you'll be passing in and out of consciousness. There will be nothing in your world apart from pain for at least three to four hours. Bug scientist Dr. Justin Schmidt was curious to discover more about the effects of insect stings, so in 1983 he developed the Schmidt Sting Pain Index to measure the painfulness of different stingers. The index runs from 1 mild to 4 severe. According to the index, the most painful insect sting of them all is that of the bullet ant of Central and South American rainforests. Dr. Schmidt has given it an unmatched 4 plus and describes the sensation of getting stung by one as like walking over flaming charcoal with a 3 inch rusty nail in your heel. Despite its ferocious traits, the ant is normally quite docile towards humans and other large animals, reserving the use of its mighty sting solely for defensive purposes. Number 7. The Bobbit Worm these ambush predators have two eyes and five antennae on their head that are used to sense prey. Meet the bobbit worm, and they're capable of snapping prey in half. It's a vicious worm, the bobbit worm. It lives mainly in the Atlantic Ocean and ranges in length from less than four inches to ten feet. It hunts by burrowing its whole body in soft sediment on the ocean floor and waiting until its antennae detect prey. Then it strikes, grabs the fish and takes it back into the sand. This species may be found prowling along the prey-rich environment of coral reefs where its coloration allows it to blend in and its slim body enables it to hunt in tight spaces. Also, it inhabits a wide range of other habitats, particularly sandy and muddy sediments as well as around rocks and sponges. It's been recorded at depths of over 300 feet deep a sting that can cause permanent nerve damage in humans leaving that portion of your body feeling numb for the rest of your life. Does the bobbit worm kind of remind you of the underground creatures from the movie Tremors? Definitely the type of animal that nightmares are made of. And yeah, it's named after the very famous John and Lorena Bobbit case. They were an American couple whose relationship made worldwide headlines in 1993 when Lorena, in self-defense, cut off John Bobbit's worm with a knife. Number 6. Blue Ringed Octopus A tourist visiting Australia had a brush with death after filming themselves handling a very dangerous creature, a deadly blue ringed octopus in their hand for several seconds. Luckily, they put the octopus down before it had a chance to sting them. The blue ringed octopus is recognized as one of the world's deadliest marine animals and carries enough venom to kill 26 adult humans within minutes, and there's no anti-venom. Characterized by its blue and black rings which appear when the animal feels threatened, the seemingly harmless mollusk possesses a venomous neurotoxin, known as tetrodotoxin, which it releases through its salivary glands. Technically, all octopus and cuttlefish are venomous, but the blue ringed octopus can't be compared. Tetrodotoxin is 1,000 times more deadly than cyanide, and the amount of poisonous liquid the little cephalopod carries can mean certain death or leave someone paralyzed for up to 24 hours after initial contact. Worse yet, there's no known antidote. A victim's best bet is to get respiratory assistance immediately. Of course, the animal's ability to produce and secrete the venom is only one of its interesting characteristics. The blue ringed octopus, though tiny, packs a lethal punch. Despite being absolutely adorable, it's one of the deadliest animals in the world that can leave unsuspecting swimmers paralyzed or dead. Number 5. The IO Caterpillar All of our gardeners, pay attention. If the summertime has you spending more time outdoors, heed this warning. 
there's a common caterpillar crawling around vegetation with a sting that stopped one man in his tracks. Brian Hirsch Sr. has become very familiar with the green, creepy crawly critters known as IO moth caterpillars. He knows best, he got stung by the IO. Those little caterpillars pack a big sting because the caterpillar is covered in spines that can break off and embed themselves in one's skin if it's handled. The broken spines cause an irritation on the skin that can last for some time after the sting. If you're stung by a caterpillar, use tape over the site of the sting to strip off spines and toxins. Then wash the site with soap and water. Hirsch is using his stinging experience to educate neighbors, even the school board and daycares about the risk these caterpillars pose. He's handed out pictures and collected a jar full of caterpillars for reference. I'm showing them this is what's out there and this is what happened and you might be interested in knowing that this can be avoided and this is what to look for. He said, no before you IO. Okay, okay, bad joke. Number four, bad joke. The Gila Monster. Should you see one of these lizards in the wild, admire it all you like, but give the animal plenty of space. A frightened Gila Monster will open its mouth and hiss. But some people don't get the message. When an aggressor fails to retreat, these monsters deploy their secret weapon, a poison bite, and the delivery method can be almost as painful as the toxin itself. With its powerful jaws, the lizard will clamp down on the victim and keep its grip. All the while, it gnaws, which draws venom from storage glands situated in the lower jaw. Slowly, this substance moves along tooth grooves and enters the open wound. Although bites are almost never fatal to human beings, they're intensely painful. Victims may experience localized swelling, nausea, vomiting, high blood pressure, weakness, faintness, excessive perspiration, chills, and fever. Some people have experienced severe reactions resulting in breathing difficulties. Given the lizard's passive disposition around people, though, they're unlikely to lash out unless provoked. Although the Gila monster is venomous, its sluggish nature means it represents little threat to humans. However, it's acquired a fearsome reputation. If you ever get bitten by a Gila monster, try dunking its head under some water instead. One of only two venomous lizards in the entire world. The other one being its larger cousin, the Mexican beetle lizard. Number three, the redback spider. Redback spiders are extremely common in Australia. The worst spiders are often found in around houses and other buildings in many towns and cities. They rarely bite humans, and when disturbed, they usually try to escape or feign death by curling its legs and dropping to the ground. However, the bite of a redback spider is capable of causing death, especially in small children, and any bite should be treated with the utmost caution. Venom accumulates in the lumen of the glands and passes through paired ducts into the spider's two hollow fangs. It contains a complex mixture of cellular constituents, enzymes, and a number of high molecular weight toxins, including insect toxins and a vertebrate neurotoxin called alpha-lactrotoxin, which causes intense pain in humans. The bite may produce the following symptoms, intense localized pain, with swelling and sweating starting five minutes after the bite, headache, nausea and vomiting may occur after one hour, profuse sweating is also common. But if you do get bitten, the following first aid is recommended. Keep the patient calm. Apply ice packs to minimize pain and swelling. Then seek medical attention. Antivenom will be administered if symptoms are severe. Number two, stay away from the platypus. The platypus is one of the most unusual creatures in the animal kingdom. A paddle-shaped tail like a beaver, a sleek furry body like an otter, and a flat bill and webbed feet like a duck. In fact, the first time a platypus was brought from Australia to Britain, people couldn't believe that it was a real animal. They thought that a trickster had sewn two animals together. The platypus is one of the few living mammals to produce venom too. The venom is made in venom glands that are connected to hollow spurs on their hind legs. Many archaic mammal groups possess similar tarsal spurs, so it's thought that rather than having developed this characteristic uniquely, the platypus simply inherited this characteristic. The platypus is the last demonstration of what was once a common mammalian characteristic. As for their venom, the different chemicals in the venom have a range of effects, from lowering blood pressure to causing pain and increasing blood flow around the wound. Coagulating effects have been seen during experiments on laboratory animals, but this has not been observed consistently. 
Since venom production rises during the breeding season, it's pretty much assumed that the venom is used as an offensive weapon to maintain dominance and to control territory. Number 1. The Box Jellyfish Box jellies are highly advanced among jellyfish. They've developed the ability to move rather than just drift, jetting it up to four knots through the water. They also have eyes grouped in clusters of six on the four sides of their bell, and they're crazy poisonous. Additionally, the infamous box jellyfish developed its frighteningly powerful venom to instantly stun or kill prey, like fish and shrimp, so their struggle to escape wouldn't damage its delicate tentacles. Their venom is considered to be among the most deadly in the world, containing toxins that attack the heart, nervous system, and skin cells. It's so overpoweringly painful, human victims have been known to go into shock and drown or die of heart failure before even reaching shore. Survivors can experience considerable pain for weeks and often have significant scarring where the tentacles made contact. Box jellyfish, also called sea wasps and marine stingers, live primarily in coastal waters off northern Australia and throughout the Indo-Pacific. Up to 15 tentacles grow from each corner of the bell and can reach 10 feet in length. Each tentacle has about 5,000 stinging cells, which are triggered not by touch but by the presence of a chemical on the outer layer of its prey's skin. Terrifying, but totally satisfying. Those were 15 dangerous animals you should never touch. Thanks for watching.